One of the most shocking images of the Second World War was the public display of Mussolini, along with his mistress, following their executions. Mussolini served as a fascist dictator of Italy until he was deposed, and during World War II he became very close with the Fuhrer of Germany, Adolf Hitler. They were very close friends, and Hitler helped him out of a few situations, including helping him out of prison. However, during the conflict, Mussolini was ousted from power by many members of the Grand Council of Fascism. One of the key figures that led Mussolini's exodus from government was his own son-in-law, Count Galeazzo Ciano, but the former dictator had the last laugh. Today we look at the brutal execution of Mussolini's son-in-law, Galeazzo Ciano. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Born in Liverno in 1903, Gian Galeazzo Ciano was the son of an admiral and First World War veteran. His father was a hero in the Italian Navy, and was given the title Count by the former King of Italy. His father was integrated into the Fascist Party, and was a founder member, and he was also involved in organising the Italian Merchant Navy. His father, however, was known for profiting from his status and office, and he held many different business interests, and lived a very lavish lifestyle. Because of this, the young Galeazzo Ciano grew up into a high-profile lifestyle where there was much glamour, expense and celebrity. His father continued in this lifestyle, and during Mussolini's march on Rome in 1922, they were both present, taking part in the huge demonstrations. It was during this march where the black shirts conquered many different points across the country, and following this Mussolini formed a new government, and the fascist coup was complete after he was made Prime Minister. Galeazzo, who lived the high life as a young man, then studied law at the University of Rome before working as a journalist, but he then decided to venture into politics and diplomacy. At the age of 27 he became infatuated to and married Edda Mussolini, the daughter of the Italian dictator. It would be this union that would secure Galeazzo great power within Italy, and their relationship produced three children. However, Ciano was seen as a playboy by the public, and it was public knowledge that he had many different affairs and mistresses whilst married to Edda Mussolini. Following their marriage, Ciano left to visit Asia and Shanghai to work as an Italian diplomat, and even during this trip, Edda Mussolini was known to have had an affair with a Chinese warlord. So maybe marriage wasn't the best for both of the couple. But when they came back to Italy, Ciano began to become integrated into his father-in-law's political party and government, and he became the Minister of Press and Propaganda. Not afraid of serving in the military either, Ciano then volunteered for service in the Italian invasion of Ethiopia, and he served as a bomber commander. In this role he did receive accolades, and was seen as a war hero after. In the eyes of his father-in-law, he gained pride and respectability for this, and he was then appointed foreign minister. In 1937 it's believed that he was involved in orchestrating the murders of the Rossellis, two brothers who were anti-fascists, killed in a French town. In his height of power before the Second World War, it's considered that Ciano could possibly have even become the dictator of Italy following the death of Mussolini. Prior to the conflict breaking out, Mussolini could have been placing Ciano into this position as his successor. However, Ciano, being more of a realist, considered the weaknesses of the Italian armed forces. He had seen their shortcomings with his own eyes, and he knew Italy were not prepared for an all-out world war and conflict, and that this would only go one way. Upon Mussolini declaring war on France in support of Nazi Germany in 1940, Ciano stated, How I am sad, I am very sad. The adventure begins, but may God help Italy. When the Germans invaded Poland, Ciano, serving as foreign minister, did have some opposition to this, as the Italians were not consulted about the invasion. He believed if they were really such close allies with Germany, this information regarding the Polish invasion could have emerged and they should have been briefed, but this never happened. These decisions led to Ciano beginning to waver his support for Nazi Germany and the Italian involvement in World War II. He believed the invasion of Greece was poorly performed, and how Italy's military invasions and ventures were ill-planned, leading to several failures. Ciano, being so disenchanted, even leaked a warning to Belgium about their imminent invasion, and he continued to become even more dissident to his father-in-law Mussolini. He had made a number of comments behind Mussolini's back, and when these were reported back to the leader, he did not appreciate them. 
His friends advised Chano to watch his mouth, but he didn't listen. During one incident, he was excluded from a meeting between Mussolini and Franco, which caused a great degree of frustration, and he believed as a foreign minister he should be there as an intermediary. More arguments and problems existed between the two, and Chano seemed to have forgotten that his job as foreign minister was simply gained because of his marriage to Mussolini's daughter. Further defeats for the Axis forces and more setbacks caused Chano to turn against the Second World War and Mussolini's exploits, and he tried to convince others to get Italy to withdraw altogether from the conflict. However, once his murmurings were heard, he was sacked as foreign minister, and the rest of the cabinet were also sacked before he was given a job as an ambassador to the Pope. He was monitored by Mussolini in this role, but Chano's dissent against him had not fallen on deaf ears. On the 24th of July 1943, Mussolini held the Fascist Grand Council, the first meeting since the war broke out, and this was called because of the invasion of Sicily. During the meeting, Mussolini told that the Germans were going to evacuate, and this led to one of his former loyal friends, Dino Grandi, to launch an attack on him. He tabled a motion to ask the king, Victor Emmanuel III, to resume his role as monarch, ousting Mussolini from leadership and power. This motion was accepted by a big margin of 19 to 8, showing a lack of support for Mussolini. Chano voted against his father-in-law, and after the meeting Mussolini was summoned to the king before being sacked and arrested. He was kept under very close watch for two months before being moved regularly for his safety and to prevent a rescue attempt by the Germans. He was kept in Grand Sasso and was rescued as expected in September 1943, and after this he set up a puppet government in northern Italy, which remained under German occupation. When the new government was put into place, Chano was sacked because of his close links to Mussolini. Along with his wife Edda and three children, Galeazzo Chano went on the run to Germany, fearing their lives if they were arrested by the new Italian government. He was quickly captured by the Germans, and instead of dealing with the new government, they handed him over to Mussolini's government. Mussolini, furious, then indicted his son-in-law on charges of treason, and Chano was placed in prison and then placed on trial. The Verona trial began, and his wife appealed for her husband to be spared by her father, but Mussolini refused to intervene on behalf of his son-in-law. Chano knew his time was up and prepared three documents. The first was his diaries, which he wished to be published, the second was a letter to the king, and the third was a letter addressed to Winston Churchill. Edda continued to try and get her husband's release, and even tried to arrange an escape plan by threatening her father and even Hitler with publishing Chiano's revealing diaries. However, during the trial there was little anyone could do. Chiano was found guilty of treason and was sentenced to death. As a member of the military, he was to be executed using a firing squad. On the 11th of January 1944, Galeazzo Chano was taken out of Verona to face his execution. Just outside of the walls of the town, he was led to a clearing against an embankment. Alongside him were a number of other men sentenced to death, and it must have been a very cold January winter's morning. The execution squad had been gathered, and opposite them were a number of wooden chairs and stools for the defendants to be sat on. Chano was led onto one of these chairs and then tied to it to ensure he did not escape or flee. He was tied tightly and the firing squad were ready, however it was noted that they were not the most skilled marksmen inside of Italy. Alongside Emilio de Bono, Luciano Gattardi, Giovanni Marinelli and Carlo Pareschi, Chano was sat awaiting his death. He was sat facing away from the firing squad in which was seen as an act of humiliation being spared the pride of facing his executioners. According to some accounts, when the firing squad were readied, Chiano then jumped forward and in an act of defiance turned his chair around and screamed long live Italy as the men fired their bullets into his chest. He was the only one of the men shot in the chest, with the rest being killed by bullets to the back. It was said as mentioned that the executioners performed their job poorly and a number of the condemned were not killed instantly, by the wounds sustained from the firing squad, being left to either bleed out or suffer a coup de grace. Chano is seen as a very interesting figure within Italy. He was a man who secured a position incredibly senior in Mussolini's government through his marriage to Mussolini's daughter, 
However, after turning against him, he wished to keep this position, but became incredibly dissenting against the Italian dictator. Giano's death was one which was in accordance with Italian laws on treason, and it's hard what to make of him as a member of an allied nation. He was a man incredibly close to the internal politics of Mussolini's dictatorship, however ultimately sided against him when the going got tough for the Italians during World War II. He is remembered today as the son-in-law of Mussolini, who at his father-in-law's behest was executed and killed. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.